Now it's my great pleasure to call on stage our first speaker. He's a gentleman called Philipp Schröder of Tesla. He used to work for a German startup company called Sonnenbatterie and then a headhunter called. And the rest is history. Please enjoy the stage. Hi. Ah, this is mine. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Good morning. So I'm here for the warm-up phase, um, so I'm trying to get, give you some insights on Tesla. Um, I think everybody here knows Tesla, and it's, it's a great privilege to present it to you guys. But I think, I thought when I, when I was thinking about my last presentation here with Sonnenbatterie, I thought, okay, I have to do something more convincing than just telling you how great Tesla is. I have to find somebody who has more credibility than I have because I'm leading sales in Germany. So I'm a sales guy, and that means I, that's what I do, I'm selling. We gave up about talking about Tesla too much before anyone has been driving the car because there is something it does with you you cannot talk about if you have not experienced it. It's very simple, and it's a brilliant product. And um, I can only encourage you guys to hop in today and have the same moment and basically see what this product is doing to you on an emotional level, but also purely by experience. But now we go back to the, let's say, to the, to the facts and figures of Tesla, and uh, I would like to take you through a brief tour um, of Tesla today. Um, most of you know it, but still I want to highlight some, some aspects. I mean, there's probably no doubt about it. Everybody who drove it will always say it was entertaining and it's a very, very, very performance-like car that you built. But the question is, okay, why do we need electricity? Why is, it, why is it important? Why isn't it just a gimmick? I mean, there are many gimmicks, but why is it so important? Don't we already have, at least in Germany, the perfect system? We have the perfect combustion engine. Hundred, one, more than 100 years of engineering went in, in such an engine. Yeah? This, is, this is what most customers are thinking. They're like, okay, we don't need this. Why do we need it? But, for sure, we all know such a com combustion engine is high maintenance, it's low efficiency, we all know it's 80% is simply going to be wasted, it's powered by explosions, yeah, it's, something, it's an expression I like to use, it's highly polluted, and you have gear shifting, etc. So the question is, why did we need it? Why was there a necessity to have a combustion engine? Anybody in the room who knows why we did have the necessity to have them? There's a very simple answer to that. Anyone? The only reason is we didn't have a plug, we didn't have a battery. Nobody would have ever used the combustion engine for anything if there was electricity available. Wherever we have electricity available, you, lose, you are using an electric engine, also for various reasons. I mean, you would never power an elevator by a diesel engine. Why? There's no reason for it. So the only reason why we built this perfect machine is because we couldn't solve that issue. Today, you see it, BMW is seeing it, Tesla is proving it every day, but also um, other companies are proving it. We have a technology that we can now use. It's proven, it doesn't have much maintenance, and it's out there since, 19, uh, since 1888, so pretty old. Now the question again, and okay, nice, okay, nice speech. Why does it matter? Why is it so important? And I think, these pictures are showing it. If we want to allow everyone on this planet to be mobile, to even have a nice car with a lot of performance, then we'll have to do it. So the reason why we're doing this at Tesla is very, very driven by one goal that is stated by, um, by our founder, Elon Musk. I mean, something to point out is whenever you see those smog pictures, people think, OK, this is Asia. It has nothing to do with us. I live in Munich. I don't care. But as you see, that's the Eiffel Tower, and it is an issue that we're having that was, I think, last year or this year even in Paris already. So the, the mission of Tesla is to accelerate the transition to sustainable transportation. Yeah, it's as simple as that. If we want to keep on living the way we are, if we want to enjoy those moments like JP and his friend, if we want to have that, we can have it. And we can even have more fun than with a combustion-driven engine, but we need to change, and there are a lot of stakeholders who will do everything to keep us from that, because their technology might be outdated at some day. So this is, the, this is the, the mission that's driving us. This is the goal since Tesla was founded, um, and we are doing everything um, to support that goal um, uh, to become 
more sustainable in transportation. Okay, this is, you all know the technology curve and you all know what I'm going to say because this is a corporate presentation. So we would like to be um, the iPhone. Yeah? We, we consider ourselves a game, ch game changer. So nothing will be in the automotive industry, nothing will be as it was before to, due to the simple fact that we are changing the te technology and the drivers and also the um, uh, yeah, multiple aspects about how a car is working. Tesla's vision is to reach a car or to build a car in the near future that is affordable for everyone. So we are reaching to get in the main mass market. But to go there, we needed to start somewhere. And we needed to overcome uh, the prejudice of the market. I mean, if you think about electric cars before Tesla, everybody had the same impressions. Ugly, small, low performance, no um, distance. Basically, we had to build a car that is everything but boring, and that was the Roadster. I just think most of you know it. The Roadster was uh, sold 2,500 times. It was the fastest sports car, one of the fastest sports car ever built in a series. And then the second generation, that's the Model S. That's the one that you will be um, experiencing if you choose to do so today. And obviously, the big goal that we're having is to reach the third generation. So that's really everything we do today is just aiming at that goal. So we also say everybody who's now a Model S owner is helping us to get there. And as you know, Tesla is building now the Gigafactory in order to allow um, the business to provide um, such a solution to the market. What is, what is also, um, uh, let's say, revolutionary about Tesla is that we change the way how we are selling cars. We are not having any distributors. Just an example, Toyota has a value of 200 billion US dollars, but the, um, the, the dealers of Toyota com combined have also a value of 200 billion US dollars. What we are doing is we say we want to interact with our customer directly. So there are no dealers, service, everything you do with a Tesla will be in relation with us, with the manufacturer directly. So that's, that's a very, also a very challenging um, um, uh, mission because we have to build the infrastructure ourselves, we do the charging ourselves, but it's very important to us that if a customer buys a Tesla, he only will have to deal with Tesla and not with any, any intermediate company. Okay, let's have a quick look at, at, the, comp at the cars we have so far. Um, we talked about the Roadster. This is where we gained our experience. Many people say, you know, the Roadster was very small in numbers and maybe not as important as, um, as we like it to be. But what we say is it gave us the USP that we're having today. We are at the moment building um, the EV uh, cars or EV cars for Toyota, the biggest company, car company in the world. And the last time I was in Palo Alto, I saw the new B-Class, the electric driven, in our factory because we are building not only for the B-Class, but also for the smart, the powertrain. So that's, I think, something that you, one can highlight. We are already acknowledged by those companies for the core USP that we have, and that's all about how does an electric vehicle work. Okay, the Model S you'll see outside. The interior is also a completely new approach. Once you sit in a Tesla, you'll, you'll have a feeling like with an iPhone, there are no buttons left. There are two buttons left. One is um, opening the glove comp compartment, and the other one is just for the warning lights. Anything else is, is monitored or um, steered and operated via the touch display. So it doesn't matter what it is. If you want to open the trunk, if you want to open the roof, if you want to listen to internet radio, if you want to take, uh, go online, you all do it via this interface. Also something that the conventional car makers said would be would never work because people are haptic and they need something to touch. And it's very similar to the uh, iPhone experience. People who get it, experience it after a couple of days, they don't want to miss it anymore. Yeah. So please feel free, see it outside. And also one very important fact is that we have software updates over the air so that we can provide every necessary update um, also to the engines. Um, the software is running also the elementary systems of the car itself. We can do it over the air, and that's a very, very um, smart way to do it. Another aspect, of course, that I would like to highlight um, from a Tesla's perspective is 
It is one of the safest cars ever built. Um, why? It's a simple fact. If you look at the, at the car itself, you are, you, you'll see that we do not have an engine, a, a big engine in front. The electric engine in the back, in the rear, is, yeah, is, 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 is like a watermelon. Yeah? It's, it's the electric engine itself is as big as a watermelon. It has 420 horsepower and accelerates you to uh, 100 kilometers per hour in 4.4 seconds. And the issue is you, you gain a lot of space. So you have the biggest crumble zone or crunching zone, I don't even know what is in English, um, on the planet. And this car is all about security. We have the best rankings. We achieved the best security rankings for, uh, safety rankings for a car in, in the US ever. So there is no safer car in, in this class um, according to the tests um, in, the, in the States. Here you see the battery. The battery is the most important component of the car. It weighs about 80, 800 kilograms, and it's in the very um, center of gravity of the car, so that you have a very low center of gravity, which allows you to handle the car very steady, and you'll, you'll see this, the center of gravity is lower than any Porsche, any uh, Ferrari, so it has a very nice and smooth handling, um, and the car literally sticks to the road. Okay, the, just a brief look on, 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 the, uh, on the electric engine. We have an inverter that is converting the DC current to the AC current, which we need for the engine. Um, and that's pretty much it. Yeah? That's, we just have one um, uh, gearbox, and that is everything you need to drive an electric car. So you see a lot of space, a lot of parts are missing. That allows you to give more space to the customer, more security uh, and safety to the customer, while driving. Obviously, also the car can be managed via an app. I mean, that's, that's something that nowadays everybody has and is almost a must. But also, let's say, the, the, uh, um, uh, the, the preheating of the car all works via um, uh, a, mobile, a mobile app. OK, one last issue about Tesla is always the charging. Everybody says, you know, they drove it and they say, OK, I love it. I love it, but you know what? I can't buy it because it, 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 where can I charge? If, I'm, if I go from Hamburg to Berlin, um, where can I charge? So basically, you can charge a Model S at every conventional power plug in Germany. If you take a, a one that you have in your home, the one uh, on the upper left side, it takes 11 hours. That's not very convenient. But if it's all you have, it's, uh, it's something that helps. Our regular solution is that you have a 16 amp um, power plug that you have at home. And all you do is you plug it in at night when you come home, and you leave in the morning fully charged. So you save a lot of time. It's very convenient. and you never have to go to a gas station again. Okay, this takes quite some time. Also, we have, uh, we have uh, two charging points in the car that allows us to, of course, increase the speed of the charging. If I just have one charge port, it takes 11 hours. If I have two, it's then 5.5 hours. But, I mean, everybody knows that we need to go long distance too. And for the long distance, um, we have invented something that we call the supercharger. The supercharger is charging a Tesla with a range of up to 500 kilometers, 50% um, in less than 20 minutes. So we position them between large cities. For example, if you go from Berlin to Hamburg, uh, from Berlin to Munich, you can already today charge your car with a supercharger in between. You go have a coffee, grab something to eat, maybe have a quick call with someone, you go back in the car, and this supercharging is free of charge. These superchargers are already available um, from Amsterdam to Austria, from uh, Norway to Copenhagen, now starting from Berlin to Munich, also Stuttgart Munich, and Hamburg uh, Berlin and Hanover Berlin are being opened this week. So we will be opening three to four supercharger sites per week in the next month. So this means until the end of 2000. Um, 14, we will pretty much cover um, all of Germany. It's also not an issue with uh, uh, in, in freezing temperatures. This is a picture from, uh, from the cross-continental cross con track of Tesla between LA and New York, because in the United States, you can already travel for free via the supercharger network from New York to LA cross-continental. 
This is the final, um, the final uh, version of what we want to achieve in Germany and in Europe within the next um, 12 to 24 months. We want to pretty much allow our customers traveling from Scandinavia all the way down to Italy and the south of France. And by the end of 2014, all of Germany, almost all of Germany, is going to be covered, at least the main routes um, uh, um, between large cities. I will stop here and invite all of you to watch us closely, see how we deliver on our promises, and please take the opportunity to try out a Model S today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Philip. <laughs> we have uh, time for one or two questions. Okay. okay, I have one question for you. Uh, just checking the market cap of Tesla is 24.6 billion at the moment, dollars, and BMW is 60. How long will it take you to overtake BMW in terms of market cap? I hear they are selling over a million cars and you haven't uh, reached uh, this number yet, right? But how long do you think will it take for you to be uh, um, Okay, that, that is Bigger like being in a, in a stock-listed, uh, very volatile um, company. Um, I think that's a really rough, uh, or very, very tough statement to make. Let's say it like this. We believe that the electric car will be a game-changer, and we believe that Tesla will be the most valuable car company um, in, on this planet one day. I don't know when, but yeah. this is the goal that um, we are aiming for, and we, th we believe that we have the assets that it takes, also due to the way how we do business with our customers, but also due to the technology. So yeah. the aim is clear. We want to become the most valuable car company in yeah. the world. And along the way, you are forcing all other car makers to go electric too. This is really the cool part about making uh, electric mobility ubiquitous. Do you have a question for Philip? If yes, please raise your hand, wait for the microphone runner, and then ask it. Tom? Thank you. Um, on your very last slide, you had uh, a figure which I couldn't read, but uh, it was indicated something about the, the, fuel, the cost of fuel and the, and the uh, savings on the cost of fuel. Can you tell us what that number yes. is? Yes, I mean, it, 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 for Germany, I can tell you, I mean, in Germany, we have very high electricity cost, still, compared to other markets. Still, you have, it will take you about 20 euros to fully charge your car um, for a range of 500 kilometers. If you take it to the Autobahn and you drive fast, it's going to be 320 kilometers, something like that. But still, um, you will reduce your cost by more than 70% just for the fuel side. And this is not even covering the maintenance side. One, one very, very important aspect about Tesla is, for us, maintenance is a loss center not a profit center. So it's very important that, for example, for our leasing customers, maintenance is for free. So if you take the, um, the gas, gasoline prices and the, the price reduction by becoming an, uh, or going electric, and you take into account also free maintenance and seeing, I mean, if any one of you is owning a car, just take the maintenance bills of the last two years, sum it up, and see what the monthly average is. We think that in Germany um, we are saving compared to uh, a five series with a big engine, um, you're saving up to 250 euros a month compared to that vehicle, um, including tax, because we have some tax exemptions, service, and gasoline power. So that's, that's it's very, it's considerable. And we see that some players in the market are seeing that. Schiphol just ordered, that's the Amsterdam uh, airport, they placed a huge um, order um, a couple of days ago, because for them it simply makes sense um, to do it from an operational cost per point of perspective. Okay, thank you. One more question. Hi, thanks for your presentation. Uh, one question is, uh, what is the overall um, uh, eco footprint of producing a Tesla versus producing, let's say, a similar combustion engine car that is compar comparable? Thank you. It is, it is overall, I mean, that reminds me of, of the, on, on the questions about photovoltaic at the beginning, right? I mean, there was also this, this, this standard phrase that you will never get the energy back that you invested in the, to a photovoltaic system. At the moment, obviously, the energy um, to, to, to produce a battery pack is quite high, but we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of um, um, things that we don't have to produce because there's a lot of things that we don't need. So pretty much it is slightly above um, a comparable a combustion engine car.
Yeah? And, and, it, and what is important to know is that we are using renewable energy to produce. So Fremont, um, the facility that is producing all the cars in the world of Tesla, is running by renewable energy. So we take this very serious. Um, also in Germany, we will now introduce just tomorrow, we will have with SolarWorld, the ge biggest German photovoltaic manufacturer, a press announcement. And we will support everyone who is driving a Model S to become green or to use green electricity with 5,000 kilometers free of range. So basically, we will award them a certain amount of money to become green because it's very important to us to be authentic um, all the way and not only have zero emissions where the, um, at the exhaust pipe, so to speak, but also be overall zero emissions. And yes, I mean, it's a technology that starts only, so there is, at the moment, um, a slightly higher input for the production. But if you go green um, and have renewable energy powering your vehicle, which we enable you to do so, um, then it's by far the better option. Am I allowed a follow-up question? How the about the, the entire uh, lifespan of a car? You just um, compared the, the production cost for the ecosystem, and uh, what about the, the lifespan of, say, 15 years driving a car? That's a really tough question because it depends what fuel you're using, it depends what car you're using, and how much you drive a year. And then, if I say something now, somebody picks it up and says, okay, you know, but that's, I drive 10,000 kilometers with, a, let's say, a hybrid, Toyota, yeah, and then you have a completely different evaluation. It's a lot of carbon that we, we have a, a calculator online, so you can go teslamotors.com and you can look up what you're comparing to, but it's fair to say that we are the most environmental friendly um, mobility technology on the market, and that's by far. So not only Tesla, but obviously EVs, yeah, so that's a fair statement to make, but I, I'm hesitant of making um, a comparison. Because okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, final round of applause for Philip of Tesla. Thank you. Thank I you. get the clicker. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>